snowfall can be heavy and temperatures often plunge below zero, Canada is a nation that enjoys and celebrates its winter season. On February 1st, 1990, the small resort town of Huntsville, Ontario, hosted the annual Winter Wonderfest, as it has for more than 20 years. Among those enjoying the snowmobile races on the frozen waters of Lake Vernon that afternoon were Barbara Hearn and her family. There was a lot of snowmobiles out on the ice. There was people everywhere. There was no reason to think that the ice wasn't safe. Barbara and her daughter decided to go home early, leaving her husband Brian and their six-year-old son Stephen to watch a few more races. I know, but I'm ready to go. You want to go? Yeah. Get for a ride? When it came time to drive the two miles home, Brian decided to take a shortcut across the frozen lake. Although Brian normally did not drive across the lake, he felt safe knowing there were other snowmobilers around. Payne was just a few hundred feet away at the time of the accident. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw him go through. I couldn't get too close. And I knew I didn't have a rope or anything. I don't think they could have survived too long. It was cold. Darn cold. Well, they must have been really afraid. And there was nothing there for him to grab the ice around him. It was just breaking away. He had nothing to hold on to. So there was really nothing he could do but try his hardest to hold his son up. Ross Sully happened to be on the ice that day, demonstrating his hovercraft when he spotted the victims. Ice water is numbing experience. If you're too cold, you can't feel anything. And the thought was in my mind that these people are going to die if we don't execute the rescue very quickly. There's very little time. And once they go below the surface, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do. Come on! Come on, you're almost there! I saw that the father was struggling with every bit of breath that he had left in him to hold his son above the water. And with the hypothermia, it didn't leave very much time he was going to go down. They couldn't make very much headway because of these snowmobile suits that had soaked up so much water. Finally, I was able to reach out and grab the small boy. We then managed to get to the father, but there was little to grab onto. We could see his fingers digging into the rubber on the side of the craft to try and hang on. I was absolutely amazed that he was able to hang on to the young man, the young boy, as, as, as long as he did and stay with it. All that you're thinking at the time is, I don't really care what happens to me, just keep my life, keep my life. Without the hovercraft, which is able to float across any surface on a cushion of air, 
rescuers might never have been able to reach Brian and his son in time. Brian and Stephen have not gone snowmobiling since the accident. We don't like talking about it, because it's one of those things that you just want to forget about. And the best thing that came out, that we were all right. I'm just so grateful to, to everybody that we can be here to enjoy the smaller things in life. Ross and Lanny, were the two people on the scene that did what they had to do, risk their own lives, and what, what they did was very special. And, and thank you, just, it, it isn't enough. I mean, what can you do for somebody that saved your life? I could have lost them. And I think then you realize how much that you do love them and need them and care for them. And, it frightens me to think about life without both of them. And I think it makes you more cautious as well with everything.